Hey guys, this is Austin. Odds are you're watching this video on a laptop very similar to this, a nearly five-year-old HP Pavilion. So for this one, I've teamed up with Intel, who are not only sponsoring this video, but an entire series on the channel taking a look at how technology is changing over the next couple years. So one of the first things I'm really curious about is where we are today. And of course, what better way of doing that than to compare two very similar laptops spread out over nearly five years. This is the HP Pavilion X360 2-in-1. As it's powered by an 8th gen Core i7 processor, it's going to be powerful, although by no means some giant workstation. But importantly, it is going to be good for the price, and even more importantly than that, it is going to be a very close match to our older HP Pavilion setup. Put these two side by side, and the family resemblance is clear. So the Pavilion TouchMart was one of the very first Windows 8 laptops that did come standard with a touchscreen. And it actually does a lot of things right, although if you take a look at the brand new Pavilion X360, there have been a lot of upgrades and changes over the last few years. The real question is whether you actually need to upgrade. So when you take a look at this older system, it doesn't seem that old. And to be fair, it still can do some basic stuff like web browsing, it's not like it's going to be completely unusable. But when you step over to a newer system with the Core i7, with the Optane memory, you're going to be getting a much, much better experience. You're getting pretty much everything you would expect on a modern laptop. So stuff like USB 3.0 is here, you're going to be getting a 4th gen Core i5, which is going to give you decent battery life and okay performance. And you're even going to be getting some extras like a DVD drive if you're still living in 1999. Actually, nah, that's not fair, right? Like. 2005 was really the, the peak of DVD. This guy is rocking a 15.6 inch 1366 by 768 panel. Now it wasn't a terrible screen when it first came out, but put it side by side with a 2018 pavilion and there is a huge difference. Not only is the screen quality itself going to be much nicer on this guy, but having a full 1080p resolution makes a big difference. With this guy being limited to stuff like 720p video and sort of very little screen real estate, it feels kind of claustrophobic in 2018. Realistically, the screen is actually one of the most noticeable differences. Having a nice quality 1080p panel does make a big difference. And while the other one is going to be a touchscreen, this is going to be a much more accurate touchscreen. You also have the HP pen if you want to use stylus input. And one of my favorite party tricks is that you actually can flip the entire thing around and treat it like a giant tablet. Now, of course, this is going to be a 15.6 inch tablet, so you should temper your expectations for how portable it's going to be. But this, especially when you pair it with the stylus, does make a nice difference when you can, you know, actually use it with one hand as opposed to something like that, which doesn't, well, I think it's kind of self-explanatory how close that comes to being a tablet. <laughs> of course, your mileage is going to vary on something like this, but I actually do find that the pen can be useful in some situations. For example, if you want to work on some graphic stuff, if you want to make some notes, or especially for people who want to have something that's going to be a little bit more ergonomic, the touchscreen paired with the pen can feel a lot better than sitting with a mouse and keyboard all day. When it comes time to upgrade your computer, one of the biggest questions is always going to be to do with performance. So when you're looking at such a wide range of years between these two laptops, obviously there are going to be some major differences, but some things are also going to be very similar. Both are currently rocking 12 gigabytes of RAM as well as a one terabyte hard drive. But look a little bit closer and there are going to be some major, major changes. In the last few years, Intel Core processors have seen some major leaps in performance. Consider that we're going from a dual core 2.7 gigahertz boost clock all the way up to a quad core chip that can go all the way up to four gigahertz on boost. Now that is really impressive, especially when you consider that that's all going to be in the same 15 watt TDP. Essentially, for the same amount of power, we're going to be doing a lot more work much, much faster. You're also getting a smaller, thinner, and lighter PC in pretty much every aspect that not only does have that more powerful processor, but you're also going to be getting dedicated graphics as an option. When you put it together, what essentially you're getting here is something that's going to be smaller, thinner, lighter, and more powerful in pretty much any way that you measure it. A lot of it has to do with the processor. Now don't get me wrong, it's not like a 4th gen core is suddenly some archaic piece of old technology, but things have advanced a lot and it is very noticeable when you put them side by side. Now yes, it is very very noticeable when it comes to stuff like gaming and video editing as you would expect, but even for normal tasks there is a big difference. I mean something as simple as opening up a web page can take a lot longer on the older system, and that's something that stuff like benchmarks don't really quite get across always. When it comes to stuff like editing 4K video, more performance is always going to be helpful. Now no, this is not going to be some giant, thick, workstation class, massive editing laptop, but what you were getting here is a solid amount of power, especially when you compare it to the five-year-old system. That eighth gen core processor is also going to be, of course, capable of playing back 4K video, whether on the internal laptop screen, if you've got a 4K display, or on an external monitor, but something else that sort of backs up this pavilion is going to be the dedicated AMD Radeon 530 graphics. Now this opens you up for some light virtual reality and mixed reality use, but almost more importantly than that, you can do some light gaming on this guy as well. Now of course, this is not going to 
be a great dedicated gaming PC. For that, you're going to want some better graphics than the Radeon 530 in this particular system, but the important thing is the Core i7 can definitely handle it. So even when you pair it with something like an NVIDIA MX150, as I've done in previous videos, you're going to be getting some much better performance and something that could definitely hold up. And with the idea that you can go with stuff like Thunderbolt solutions to get you even better external graphics options, having a powerful processor is very important. Intel Optane Memory is an interesting piece of tech that I'm actually going to go much more in depth on in a future video. But the basic idea is that it functions similarly to an SSD cache, but it allows you to get the full responsiveness of an SSD while still not losing the full size capacity of a hard drive. So this is going to speed up things such as opening up Windows, some of your major programs, and it's also going to be useful for more creative applications, such as when you're photo and video editing, you're going to have that super fast SSD cache, which is all going to be working in the background. This is one of the clearest differences between a newer and older system. There's so many more possibilities with this, whereas with the older computer, you basically get what you get. In just a few years, we've gone from thin and light laptops being able to do basic tasks reasonably well, to having a lot more power to the point where you can do gaming on these. You can do photo editing, and you can do proper video editing on something that is going to be this small, this thin, and this light. I know this video was sponsored by Intel, but these new 8th gen core processors are a legit game changer. Having this level of performance in such a thin and light laptop just wasn't possible all that long ago, and it's hard for me to imagine much of a better time to upgrade than now.